Hi, I'm Marshall. I'm the owner of Going Gear, and I'm here in our store in Smyrna, Georgia. This is the extended review of the limited edition Olight S Minis. All right, so here we are with the six limited edition S Mini lights from Olight. Three titanium and then three copper. There's actually a stainless steel one coming as well, but I don't have one yet. So you'll see that in the future. But for right now, these are the six existing versions. I wanted to do a video last year when they had the S1 limited edition versions. This is one of my EDCs that I carried for close to a year. This is the S1 titanium, but we sold out of them too fast. They came in around the holidays and we sold out of them super quickly. But luckily these came in before the holidays and we ordered a ton of them. So as of the time of this video, we have a decent amount of all of these or we have a decent amount on the way. I love these lights. I think they're super cool. The limited editions that they did last year were really, really popular. And like I said, I carried one myself for a long time. And these are smaller. They're higher output. They did get rid of the magnet in the tail cap. So if you're a big fan of the magnet, then uh, there are plenty of other Olights that you can look at. But other than that, they made some really nice improvements. And the finishes on them are all really good. I actually was very impressed with the way they did the finishes, especially the rose gold. I was expecting that to be more of a, uh, well, a rose gold. But it honestly looks kind of bronzish, and I, I really like the way it turned out. So let's talk about the specs real quick. On both of these, you're going to get 550 lumens on max output, where it'll run for a minute and a half. Then it's going to drop down to 300 lumens just because of heat. And a quick note on that, we always have people ask us about that. Be like, oh, it only does a minute and a half. Pretty much every flashlight we sell does that. And it's because you don't want these lights getting too hot. These are small lights. You've got a lot of output in them. A minute and a half is going to start getting pretty warm. You don't want it damaging your hand. You don't want it damaging the light. So it's going to drop the output just to protect you from that. All the lights that we sell do that, especially in this size, or pretty much all the lights anyway. Definitely all the ones in this size. And uh, Olight's really honest about it. So they say exactly what it does in their run times. Most other manufacturers just say, hey, it runs at 500 lumens for an hour. And no, it doesn't really do that. It runs at 500 lumens and it drops to two or 300 where it runs for the rest of the time. So Olight tells you up front what exactly it's going to do. So 500, 550 lumens down to 300. You also have 60 lumens, 12 lumens, 0.5 lumens, and then 361 feet or 110 meters of beam distance. And if you want to see the full specs, here are the full specs. Just pause it for a second. But let's go back to taking a look at the lights. So three different copper finishes and then three different titanium finishes. The three different titanium finishes, I believe they call this one colorful, but I always call it rainbow, or I've been calling it rainbow since I first saw it. This is actually the one that I've been EDCing myself. I'm normally not much of a uh, colorful rainbow kind of guy, but I think this one looks really cool. And this has actually been one of the most popular ones. This one and the raw copper have been neck and neck in sales for us. And uh, one of the big reasons I've been carrying the titanium over the copper is because they put neutral tint. So you have neutral white in the titanium. You have cool white XML2 LEDs in the copper ones. Plus you have a little bit heavier weight. You have a little bit lighter weight. There are some minor differences between the two materials, uh, but honestly, a lot of people have just been going for the finish that they want because you've got these six different finishes that all do look quite a bit different from each other. So let's open these two lights up just so you can see what's on the inside, and then we can take a look at all the different finishes. So here is the bead blasted titanium. So the titanium ones come in this black box, and they have a picture of what the light is on the front. You got some information on the back, no real specs, just some information about the company. And uh, on the flap on the inside is actually some more stuff. So this is kind of cool. So you've got the user manual. That's always worth the read. Good information in there. But they are doing a giveaway with all of these. So on the back, you've got all these different serial numbers. And they're giving away a bunch of different prizes. So Olight is giving away a bunch of different prizes. You can contact them. Service at olightworld.com if you have a matching serial number. And the serial numbers are underneath the pocket clip. So they're right under there if you're wondering where your serial number is. That's pretty cool. If you get one of the numbers that's listed on here, then you can uh, just let Olight know. I'm guessing you just have to take a picture of it and let them know or take a picture of a, I don't know, something. I'm sure I'm sure they have a uh, way for you to prove it. But you do that, and then they're giving away a bunch of lights. So that's, that's pretty neat. Never seen a company do anything like that, especially a flashlight company. Uh, so here is the bead blasted one. We're going to set it to the side, and we'll just open up. The inside, actually, it's glued in there. I was going to show you that there's nothing else in there, but I think this is actually 
yep, it's glued down in there. But So that's what you get. The battery is actually already in the light, so you don't have to worry about putting the battery in. There is an isolator disc down in there that you have to remove. But other than that, uh, that's what you get. And then same thing on the copper, but you have this kind of burnt orange color on the packaging itself. And then there's the copper light. So one note on the raw copper, these actually come in a sealed bag because copper tarnishes super, super easily, which is one of the big appeals of it or probably the biggest appeal of it. Uh, so these come in a sealed bag because humidity or even fingerprints touching it, it's going to cause, cause it to tarnish pretty much immediately. Like if you're carrying this, you're going to see it tarnishing the very first day that you have it. So these come in a sealed bag. So they'll come nice and shiny and new, like a brand new penny when you first get them. And then they'll start getting that personalized, nice tarnished color to them very, very quickly. So here are all your different finishes. Let's line them up halfway decently. All right, so here are the three titanium ones. So let's take a look at them. Let's actually zoom in just so you can see a little bit closer look. So here is the bead blasted titanium. Last year, this was the most popular titanium finish. This year, it's getting edged out, edged out by that colorful rainbow one. I still really like the bead blasted. That's what I carried myself last year. Let me actually show you the difference between the two, just so you can see they made these things, these things, I actually should probably put it on camera. <laughs> they made these things higher output and smaller size. So 550 lumens on these, and you can see they're actually quite a bit shorter. So really impressive. One of the things they did, like I said, is they took out the magnet, but all the internals, they just shrunk them down as much as they possibly could. And now keep in mind, the S1 was already a tiny, tiny light. I mean, it was already, I mean, it's one of our most popular lights that we've ever sold. And one of the big reasons is how compact it is, how easy it is to carry. So this was already a super compact light, and they made it even smaller. So here is the bead blasted finish. You can see you've got that rose gold PVD coating around the, uh, the switch and then around the bezel. The pocket clips, you'll notice, are actually fixed in place, which is kind of nice. One of the things that people always say about the Olight Baton series, they're like, oh, I can't find my switch in the dark. And what I always do is I just turn the switch or turn the pocket clip to where it's right next to the switch. That way it's really easy to orient in the dark and really easy to find the switch. But on this one, you know that the switch is always opposite the pocket clip because you cannot turn that pocket clip around. It's set in place. You can remove it if you want to. You can just pop it off if you want to. But, uh, you know, if you have it in your hand, you feel that pocket clip just dire directly opposite is going to be the switch. So that was a nice improvement that they made on that. And then it's still oriented to where you can attach it to the bill of a, a, a baseball cap or any other hat. You cannot reverse it, so there's not a slot you see to reverse to the other side. But it is oriented properly for you to just slide it on a hat and to be able to use it as a headlamp. So it's nice that they did that. Here is the polished titanium. So here's the polished titanium finish. Really nice weight really durable finish. So you've got that uh, PVD coating on there that holds up really well. So if you want one that stays nice and shiny, it's going to hold up as, as well as it possibly can. Then one of the PVD coatings is definitely the way to go. So that's basically everything except for these two right here. So you can see still it held up pretty well. I carry this for close to a year, but you can see you start getting some wear around any places where, you know, the pocket clip turning around and around the head. So if you don't want that, go for one of the ones that has the PVD coating, which is everything except for the raw copper and then the bead blasted titanium. Here's a closer look at that rainbow PVD colorful one. They even did the pocket clip, which is a nice touch. So they got the whole thing with that uh, rainbow finish, which you, see, which you can see is kind of iridescent when you turn it around. It's a really neat finish. It turned out really nice. I, uh, I like it a lot. So I've been carrying it myself. And these are all pretty unique. So if you open up a bunch of different ones, the way they did the PVD, you can see that they're different finishes on the different ones. So from light to light, you get slight variances in the colors, which is pretty cool. There's the optic down in there. I didn't show you that yet. So there's the optic. You've got a nice optic in there. So what an optic does, uh, as opposed to a reflector, it will give you a really nice, smooth, clean, even beam. Instead of having that bright part in the center, and the dimmer part out to the side, which I think is ideal for an EDC light. So when you have the beam, it's just very smooth and clean and even throughout. Instead of having, like if we're looking at this packaging here, uh, if you have something with the reflector and you're holding it this close, you're gonna get that bright part in the center where the hot spot's about that big and you get kind of tunnel vision. So it's not ideal for reading things. It's not ideal for up close kind of use. 
Obviously, these aren't going to give you any crazy distance, but for EDC-type lights where you're mostly using them for short range or medium range, I think optics are the way to go because they give you just such an even beam, which you'll see really well when we come outside or when we go outside. Here is the raw copper one. So you've got the raw copper, you've got the blue around the switch and then around the bezel. So you've got a PVD coating on that. So that's going to hold up really well. But the raw copper will tarnish. So you have to keep that in mind. If you don't want something that's going to look like an old penny that you've been carrying for a while, you get that really personalized tarnished look, then do not go for the raw copper because it will definitely do that and it'll do it really quickly. Here's actually one that I carried myself for a while. You can kind of see what it looks like, which I really like. I like the way it looks. I like the way it feels. I like the weight. And uh, it's got some really neat properties that I think are really, really interesting. But keep in mind that it's going to come looking like this, but before too long, it's going to look like this, especially if you're someone like me that has nice acidic sweat. It's uh, going to get a tarnish on it very, very quickly. I think mine looked like this after... A few days, <laughs> it was pretty quick. So it doesn't take long at all to get a nice tarnish on it. So here is the raw copper one. You can see you've got the stainless steel clip on that. And then here is the rose gold. And they call it rose gold. It's kind of like what they did last year. They call it a rose gold. And neither of them really looked all that rose. This one almost has a bronze color to it, which I like a lot. Uh, you've got the blue PVD around the switch and then around the bezel as well. And then a matching pocket clip. You know, a lot of times they'll do the other color pocket clip or they do the black or they'll do the stainless steel. But on this one, you got that nice matching pocket clip. It's got a really cool look to it. And the last one we have here is the black copper. First heard about black copper and I was like, what on earth are they doing? Why would they do that? The whole appeal of copper is that it has that nice weight to it and it gives that nice tarnish. Why would you coat it black? Why would you not just make a black aluminum one? Which granted, they probably will eventually. But then it came in, I was like, oh, that's actually really nice. It's kind of like the rainbow one. It's like, oh, that actually looks really, really good. So it's got a nice finish to it. It's got kind of a glossy finish. Um, and the color that they used is just this, this deep graphite or black color that just, man, it looks really nice. And you got the nice matching black pocket clip and then the pops of color on the switch and then, uh, or sorry, on the bezel and then around the switch as well. The black copper actually looks really nice, and it's got a decent weight to it. You know, a lot of times copper lights, especially when you start getting into the larger ones, they get kind of heavy. I mean, if you had, say, uh, any of the SR series from Olight or any of the, in the Intimidator lights or the Marauders or anything like that, those lights are probably a little too big to make out of copper because they're just going to be total chunkers and just not going to be very fun to carry. But this, the weight is not bad at all. You're still not going to notice it in your pocket just because it's so small. So it's got a nice, really weighty feel to it without being super heavy. And the finish looks really good. And so it's a black PVD coating that's going to hold up really well. And uh, it's going to keep this nice finish for a long, long time. So let's line them all up just so you can see them side by side, kind of up close, get a better idea of the different finishes. And then, of course, on our website, we have bunch of high resolution pictures just so you can see them how they all look and uh, there's all six of them so they're also like I said be uh, a stainless steel one coming soon it's a deep gray actually looks really good we don't have any of those yet but uh, check out our site if you want to see what that's going to look like and then maybe we'll see some more in the future you know we've been talking to Olight about doing some other different finishes and materials in the future so maybe we'll see some of those going forward. Okay, so let's put all these to the side except for the rainbow because I've already got the battery in that. Actually, one quick note. Uh, let's find one that has still there still has the battery isolator in it. So I think I already took it out of all these because I've actually been using them. But there's a battery isolator disc that comes with these from the factory. So you just need to pull that out before you start using the light. And they come with a CR123 battery. You can also use rechargeable CR123s, which I highly recommend. You know, these things, I only change my battery, my EDC light, maybe every couple months because I'm mostly using the lower outputs. But uh, still, it's nice to have a rechargeable battery in there so you don't have to keep on feeding it these relatively expensive batteries. You know, you buy one of these three or four times and you've basically paid for your rechargeable battery and the chargers aren't too expensive either. 
But one note is to show you that it goes the opposite way of pretty much every other light on the market, with the exception of a lot of the baton series. The battery goes where the positive end goes out towards the tail. So just keep that in mind. If your light isn't working, it will come with from the factory with the correct orientation. And they actually did engraving on some of their other baton series where it showed the battery going towards the tail. But I guess they, they figured that uh, people have figured it out by now. So just keep that in mind that the positive end goes towards the tail cap on these. Okay, so let me show you the interface. It's all controlled by this side switch. If you've seen the Baton series, you're gonna be familiar with this because it's the same interface they've used for a while and it works super, super well. So tap that side switch, it'll turn the light on, press and hold, it'll cycle through your different outputs. Double click from on or off and you get that nice slow, or not really slow, but you get that kind of smooth transition into the turbo. Three clicks will get you into strobe. And then while it's on, if you do a click and press, it will flash once, do another time, it'll flash twice, and those are the timers. So one is three minutes, one is nine minutes, the one flash is three minutes, the two flashes is nine minutes, which is kind of nice. You've get, got a built-in timer, so if you wanna use it as a nightlight, or if you wanna have it automatically turn off, you don't wanna completely drain your batteries, you can do that. And you can do that on any of the different output levels if you wanna have it in one of the lower output levels and have the timer turned on, you can do that. So just to switch between them, you just do the click and then click again and then press on that second click. So pretty cool interface. There is uh, an electronic lockout as well. To, so to get into that, if you press and hold, actually, let me talk about that real quick. Let me get it out of the lockout. So if you press and hold from off, it'll go straight into a moonlight, which is honestly the output that I use the most. When you're outside, and you'll see better when we go outside, this is perfect to see what's right in front of you. You'll be able to see the path in front of you. You'll be able to see what's in your hands, what's in your pack. You get amazing battery life on this one, on this output. And uh, you don't have to worry about blinding yourself. So, I mean, if you're using 550 lumens up this close, or even, you know, pointing at the ground in front of you, you kind of get blinded. So, you can drop it to one of the lower outputs, have great battery life, not blind yourself. And I, like I said, use that more than anything else. But anyway, if you press and hold and you keep on pressing and holding, you'll see it turn back off. And then that is an electronic lockout. So you just tap the switch and it's going to go with a quick little moonlight flash just to let you know that it's locked out. And then you can press and hold. You'll get a flash and then it'll go into moonlight. And then you will be out of the lockout. There's not a mechanical lockout on this just because the threads aren't anodized because, you know, these are solid metal. So you have to pretty much remove the battery. So if you want a mechanical lockout, take the battery out. That's pretty much the only way to do it. You can't just loosen the tail cap a half turn like you can do on the aluminum model. So just keep that in mind. Use the electronic lockout, or if you're gonna have it in long-term storage, you really wanna have that total peace of mind, just take the battery out. We always get asked the question, I get asked the question in the comments all the time. We have people in the store all the time that ask us about having these things accidentally activate. And I can tell you that I have never had, especially the new series with that soft rubber switch, activate accidentally in my pocket. You can see, I'm actually pressing on it. Let me zoom in all the way just so you can see totally. Let me do it on the titanium one. But I'm depressing it quite a bit and it's not turning on. I'm actually depressing it below where the switch ring bezel is. You can see you've got to push down past that to get it to actually turn on. So I've never had it accidentally activate in my pocket. I don't wear skinny jeans, so that may be part of it. If you wear super tight skinny jeans, it may accidentally do it. But uh, one thing you could do on the older ones was just turn the pocket clip over that and it would keep it from doing that. You obviously can't do that on these new limited editions, but still, like I said, it has never been a problem for me and most of the customers that we talk to, they say it has not been an issue at all. So there is a mode memory in here. So if you turn it off and turn it back on, it's gonna come back into the same output, sort of. Uh, the one exception is going to be high. So the max output of the 550 lumens, it will memorize that, but it's only gonna do that for 10 minutes. And they do that for sort of safety reasons. Like I said, it's not gonna very easily accidentally activate in your pocket, but on the chances that it does, it's probably been in your pocket for at least 10 minutes. And if it does turn on, they don't wanna turn it on in the max output where it gets all warm in your pocket. So it's gonna to default to medium after 10 minutes if you have had it, uh, if you haven't been using it and you turned it off in high the last time you used it. But the other outputs, it will memorize. So if you have it in moonlight 
and you turn it back on, it's going to go back into the moonlight. The one exception is going to be that max output of the 550 lumens. So again, real quick on the interface, just tap that side switch to turn it on, press and hold, it'll cycle through your different outputs. Double click from on or off and it will go into the turbo. Triple click and it'll go into strobe. And then the timer is if you have it turned on, press and then press and hold. And you've got the two different timers. And then you can press and hold from off to go into the moonlight and then keep on pressing and holding and it will do the lockout. All right, so that's the interface and everything of the new Olight S Mini. Let's go ahead and take a couple of these outside. We'll take one of the titanium, one of the copper, and we'll show you how they do outside. All right, got a couple of the S Minis outside. Got the big 40 mag light that I always use as a control. Let's go ahead and try out the mag light. Tree right there is about 30 feet away. Dock house down there on the lake is about 100 feet away. So there's your mag light. Let's do the copper one, the cool white first, and we'll start it out on the max output. So there's your max output, 550 lumens. Really impressive little light. They got all these really neat materials and finishes. You've got a smaller size than last year's limited edition, smaller than the S1, and higher output. Pretty impressive they managed to do all of that at once. So there's your 30 feet, there's your 100 feet away. Let's zoom in just so you can see how well everything's lit up down there. So very great illumination, really nice wide beam, really similar beam profile to what you saw on the S1. So very wide and spread out. Lights up a wide area at once. Not a ton of dimmer spill on the side, but I really like this kind of beam for EDC purposes up close uh, and medium range kind of stuff because so, you don't get that tunnel vision. You don't get that bright part in the center where if you're looking at something up close, that's you're only, only illuminating uh, the bright part in the center very well. You don't get that with the, uh, with the optic, as you can see with this. We'll shine it around a little bit. Let me show you the lower outputs. You can see what those look like. There's your low, great for up close kind of stuff. Really good battery life. And then here is your moonlight. Amazing battery life. And as you can see, it's definitely a usable amount of light, especially for up close kind of stuff. You'll see what's on the ground in front of you. You obviously see your hand in front of you, what's inside your pack, what's inside your tent. Perfect for that kind of stuff. Okay, let's try out the titanium, the neutral white. So there is your neutral white on the max output. There's your 30 feet, there's your 100 feet away. Slightly slower or slightly lower output, but uh, honestly, I like these better just because I like the tint. I like the color of the beam. You can see greens and browns look a little more green and brown. They tend to bring out colors just a little bit better. It's a little bit of a sacrifice. So you have the lower output. It's definitely a personal preference, but I uh, get asked a lot, what do I prefer? And I like the neutral white. I like the colors that it brings out. But uh, man, those copper finishes are really cool. <laughs> so it's, it's a struggle. It's a daily struggle choosing which one to, one to get for sure. Let me show you the lower outputs on this one. There's your low. Just cycle through them. And then here is your moonlight. Oops. There's your moonlight. Still great for up close kind of stuff. All right, let's do them one after the other. We'll do the cool white, neutral white, just so you can quickly see the difference between the two. It's a little bit more intensity on the cool white, but not markedly so. LEDs have been getting better and better about making the neutral white and the high CRIs closer to the cool white but they are still a little bit lower in output. Okay, let's take these out to a longer distance. All right, got some more space to try out the S Mini. Let's go ahead and do the copper one first again. So that boat right there is about 20 feet away. Got a couple targets set up out there. First one is at 50 yards. Second one on the left is 100 yards. And then the tree line beyond is 130 yards. Compact light, really wide, pretty floody beam. You're not gonna get any crazy distances out of it, but you can see, let's see if I can get my finger in the frame correctly, 50 yards is right there, 100 yards is, you can see the lighter parts of that target, and then the tree line beyond is the 130 yards. Makes it all, out to all of that pretty well. You're not gonna get, again, serious illumination at distances, but for such a compact light, putting out a very respectable amount of light, you can see you get some decent distance. Let me actually show you the lower outputs, what those look like. There's your low. I don't know how well it shows up on camera, but uh, it's lighting up that boat pretty well. And then your moonlight, again, 
great for up close kind of stuff. Awesome battery life on that. So that is the cool white, that's your copper. Here is your neutral white on the titanium. So there's the boat. We'll zoom in out there just so you can see what it looks like out there. Again, I love the colors on this. I love the way it makes greens and browns look just when you're outside, just makes everything look a little bit more natural. But uh, it's definitely a personal preference. You have the slightly lower output. Get the one you like best. Get the finish you like best, which is uh, what most people have been doing and definitely is something that I am guilty of for sure. I'm like, ooh, copper, that's really cool. I think I'll uh, deal with the cool white. So just get the one you like or get all of them like a lot of customers. Let's go ahead and cycle through the lower outputs. There's your low. Bunch of useful outputs on this and they're very well spaced out and I really like the way it does that uh, slow turn on and off, especially from the turbo. It's pretty neat. Okay, let's do them one after the other. So we'll do the cool white first. Here's your copper. Here's your titanium. I'll switch them back and forth real quick. So I've done this in some recent videos where I've just walked around and talked about high lumen flashlights or why I use flashlights, why I carry flashlights, why I think other people should carry flashlights. And uh, I've asked you guys to comment and let me know how you use a flashlight on a daily basis. And I wanted to do that again because I'd really like to get a nice sample of uh, spooky ghosts and goblins of you guys telling me stories about how you use lights and I'd like to make a video about that. So if you carry a light on a daily basis or if you use it on your, on your job, or even if you just have one in your vehicle or in your purse or in your backpack, and you've been in a situation where you're like, man, I'm really glad I had a nice light, or even I just had a light at all. Even if you had some cheap gas station junker, if you had a light and you found it useful, let me know and I'd like to make a video just talking about stories like that. So I'm asking you guys for stories. I figure I'll start off with one of my own. This is when I first started backpacking with my wife back when we first met, oh, 14 years ago now. So it was, it was quite a while ago. And uh, I had bought my first nice high quality LED light. It was a Phoenix uh, LP1, PL1, something like that. But it put out a crazy 100 lumens, which was actually really impressive for the time. And it still is a relatively usable amount of light. But we are camping up in North Georgia and uh, we heard some kind of rustling out there in the woods. In North Georgia, there's a lot of critters out there. You never really know what's going to be out there. And I wanted to know. I wanted to know if it was a deer or if it was a raccoon or if it was a possum or even coyote or bear or something like that. I wanted to know what was going on out there just in case, you know, we needed to secure our food or anything like that because it was when we were making dinner. And there were some other people around us and everybody had kind of cheap lights that didn't really light anything up. So I turned on my 100 lumen Phoenix and uh, saw that it was a couple of black bears and they were going towards people and they were going after people's food. And there were some guys that had kind of food and trash strewn everywhere and they went straight to them and were kind of harassing them. And the bears went away eventually. You know, they never really came over to us and never really bothered us, but uh, it was, sure was nice to know <laughs> what was actually out there. You know, maybe it's a two-legged animal that we had to worry about. But we were able to light it up pretty well, not extremely well, because 100 lumens isn't gonna go that far in a compact light. But we were light, able to light it up well enough to know what was going on out there and to kind of prepare ourselves, you know, to secure our food and to get away from our food and to try to uh, draw the bear's attention away and get them away from our campsite. So there's my first story. If you guys have any stories, definitely let me know in the comments. So if you've seen any of my other Olight videos, you can probably tell that I'm a fan of theirs for sure. They make nice stuff. They have some cool materials that they're doing in their limited edition lights like these. They have some cool finishes. I mean, six different finishes and two different materials. How many other manufacturers are doing anything like that? Great craftsmanship, great designs, great interfaces and uh, they put all of that into these limited edition S-minis. I think these are an easy buy. I highly recommend them. Like we said in our newsletter blast, and if you've seen anything we've done on social media or the forums or anything like that, I think these are the best gift that we have for 2016 for sure. So if you like them, I would recommend hopping on them 
very quickly <laughs> as of the time of the video we uh, we have a decent amount of stock and some more on the way but last year we sold out really quickly of the s1 limited editions a lot faster than we expected to they didn't last very long so i'm not sure how long these are going to last but if you like them you can get them from me at goinggear.com any questions or comments you can reach me in the comments or any of my guys at goinggear.com as always get going and start something thanks for watching